Happy Monday, everyone. Welcome back to those of you that come here uh, Monday. Certainly appreciate spending some time with you, but if you're brand new to us, my name's Doug. We spend some time uh, looking at a passage, making some observations and some applications, and we're in a series on purpose, and we look back to Sunday. So if you haven't found us there yet, uh, listen to Sunday's message regarding your purpose and God's family. But I want to pick up on a key verse. This is toward the end of the message. It's Ephesians chapter 4. It says, Instead, we will hold to the truth in love, becoming more and more in every way like Christ, who is the head of the church, head of his body, the church. Under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it, the church, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is, and these were things I highlighted on Sunday, healthy and growing and full of love. Well, today I want to uh, begin my observation with a question. And the question is as much application as it is observation, but if you were to describe, to describe your spiritual life, could you use those three words? Could you use healthy, growing, and full of love? Because what I want to highlight is the fact that those qualities came out of a context, and the context is an analogy of the body that you're part of a body, and when you're part of a body, you can be healthy, growing, and full of love. When you're separated from the body, when you're just a part, not part of, then you can't be healthy, growing, and full of love the way that the Bible wants us to. So I want to I wanna make an application today and give you one other verse because I want to narrow this whole thing down to a key reason why I want you to have the sense of belonging today. This is about the power of belonging. But it's, it's, it comes out of what I would consider a foundational truth. You cannot become and do everything God has for you by yourself. You need the body and the body needs you. And one of the areas comes out of a verse uh, from Colossians. This is Colossians chapter 4, verse 12. A guy named Epaphras. Epaphras has been tireless in his prayers for you, praying that you'll stand firm, mature, and be complete in everything that God wants you to do. You know, someone said that even the Lone Ranger has Tonto, so he wasn't even alone. And yet a lot of Christians, they try to live out their Christianity alone, and they don't have an Epaphras who is a prayer person in their life. And this is what I want to highlight today. I want to talk about the significance, really, of prayer partners. And when you're in a life group, how praying together is so valuable. I honestly can't imagine my Christian life without people having prayed for me and with me. Certainly there was salvation. I would come to know Jesus. You know, my, my story is that somewhere around 9, 10 years old, uh, I, might have been, I might have started praying it even earlier than that, but somewhere around 9, 10 years old, I remember praying to receive Jesus into my life dozens and dozens of times because I didn't think it took. But I also remember this. I had vivid memories of Sunday night services. So in my years growing up, we went to Sunday school, then we went to church. Uh, sometimes it was kids' church, sometimes it was adult church or big church. And then it was coming back to Sunday night church. So I had a lot of church growing up. But Sunday night, I can't tell you that I remember anything about what was spoken but I do remember the end of the services, how many times they invited people to come down for prayer. And I don't know why, as a, as a kid, I felt like I needed prayer. And so I would come down, and so many times my meaningful experiences with God involved someone else putting their hand on my shoulder and praying over me. Uh, I can't even begin to tell you how valuable that was, knowing that there were people praying, not at this point for me to get saved and not even praying about a problem. I think the prayers were really about that I would become and do what God had for me, that they were praying about my growth, my health, uh, becoming who God wanted me to be. And this didn't last a long time. It didn't have to be hours long. It wasn't like these all night prayers. Some of this was like for five minutes coming down, somebody praying over me. I certainly remember in my twenties having, you know, Christian friends, where we prayed for each other. We prayed for our futures. We, we didn't just go to a church. We actually gathered together in small groups. We didn't call them life groups back then. We just called them Christian friends. And, uh, but there was some regular routine of praying for each other. 
And certainly I can't even begin to imagine uh, my life as a pastor without having people who have prayed for me over the years. Uh, you would know me as someone who prays for you or for others, but I want to tell you today, as a pastor, I've had many people pray for me. And different times, church members or other pastors or people that uh, love me, and I've needed things, and I've prayed for wisdom, I've prayed for help, I've prayed for different things, and I can't even imagine doing life without prayer partners. So, this is my reason for you to belong, to get planted. At some point, God wants you to not only have some epaphrases in your life, at some point, God wants you to grow in your faith, and you become an epaphras to someone else. People should pray for each other, you should be on the receiving end, but you at times, and maybe the rest of your life, maybe even after this, you'll realize, I'm qualified, God called me, part of what I do is to pray for my brothers and sisters, not just the ones in general that I know, kind of my church, you know, in general, but the close ones that you know their personal lives, you know where they work, you know their kids, you know things that are going on in their personal lives, and so I want to speak uh, life over this, that more of us would be gathering in small groups praying for one another. There is remarkable strength. There are miracles waiting to happen. There's encouragement and strength that comes when we do this together. So my prayer today is an empowerment prayer. It's not just that God would help you with your problems. I want to pray that God would give you power to uh, walk in the calling he has for you, part of which is that you pray for other people. So Jesus says, I pray for my friends. I want to pray a uh, empowerment prayer over their hearts, their minds, their spirits, that if they're not already doing this, that you would raise them up to be someone who uh, has courage, um, has opportunity, has faith to pray for other people. I thank you that you're using some of the people that are already listening to me in this way. I pray that you'd only increase this. I pray you'd increase their discernment. I pray you'd increase their anointing. I pray that the, the prophetic side of certain people are going to rise up even more where in moments of prayer, they're being guided by you on specifically how to pray. Even if it wasn't requested that way, you're going to help us to become stronger people because we pray for one another, we believe the best in them, and we're not just praying to get over problems, we're praying to walk in our purpose. I pray that there would be fruit from today, because my friends leaned into your word, in Jesus' name, amen.